Hi, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to the African Legal Innovation Week. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening from whatever it is you're joining us. Uh, my name is Rudon Oloide, a partner at Tech Advisory. I'm excited about joining the African Legal Innovation Week. Um, um, speaking about um, the state of legal um, tech in Nigeria, um, over the last few decades, um, we've seen uh, more uh, innovation around um, deployment of technology um, in legal services. And of course, this is born out of the state of the orthodox um, legal services as we have it. Um, the current state of the legal services or in the past has as well been plagued with a um, lot of um, restrictions, a lot of um, slow movements that been nothing really, um, really justice serving and sort of also makes um, the wheel of the justice system quite slow. So um, over the last two decades, we've seen pretty much good number of innovations coming out in this space to sort of um, show up the activities there and also make um, justice accessible to people who truly need it. And as well too in the administrative part, also trying to make um, justice move as fast as possible. But also um, what was also seen in also the fact that a um, couple of all these uh, um, startups that have emerged uh, providing services and also democratizing access to justice, um, they sort of provide these services um, sort of pro bono and very few of them uh, we've actually seen to be um, sort of profitable in that sense. Um, one very quick example is uh, in the past uh, in Nigeria, we've always had, in terms of law reporting, it's always, always been um, the traditional um, textbook style. And it takes like pretty much like a week from the day of delivery of judgment to when um, these judgments could actually be assessed by people. So, but we have amazing startup, um, amazing um, innovation from a company like um, Law Pavilion that emerged um, very at the very early stages of electronic reporting in Nigeria, who has also grown really big now. Um, so has also been able to introduce a couple of other things like the use of, use of AI um, into um, service provision um, from law firm point of view. So the democratization of um, access to um, law reporting and making it electronic also made sure that um, this could actually be assessed on the go in real time. Um, it could also be delivered to people faster than waiting for um, the traditional print system to get it across. So what we see here is a situation where um, the court system right now even acknowledges um, law pavilion as um, a law report that is often cited in judgments and often used in the Nigerian courts. But beyond that, there's also seen pretty much innovation around law office management. Uh, we've seen innovation around building legal marketplace, around developing automation for contracting and also a couple of other documents. We've also seen um, legal, you know, legal tech um, startups have actually been committed into democratizing provision of legal services, bringing it closer to people who can actually pay the premiums um, for the um, quote unquote, um, the conventional law firms. So we've seen more and more also democratization of legal knowledge. We've seen law party in that space doing really amazing job at very early stage. And of course they still exist now and still continue to put out really amazing content. We've got legal box. Um, uh, my law, a host of um, number of legal tech um, service providers in Nigeria. Uh, but beyond that, um, the space has also been plagued with a couple of challenges, which also is evident in other spaces in the country. First is a lack of funding for a start. Um, I mean, legal tech is not big. It's not so cliche as we have like the FinTech or third who are actually getting um, that like injection of funds. Um, but with what we've seen with you know, um, initiatives like the HII, which also sort of help some of these startups to also um, assess funding and also uh, mentoring and all of that. Uh, we are trying, I mean, that itself is sort of helping the space um, grow and also see really amazing stuff come out from people pushing innovation in the space. But lack of funding, like infrastructure, um, the social divide, which also means maybe some people can actually can't pay for these things. And also um, the similar lack of um, that wide dividing um, this um, number of people who are educated and not educated. So, uh, for me, I think the next stage of the innovation will be um, where we um, service providers can actually create value and also making sure this value is value that people can actually pay for. And um, so that might mean in terms of pricing, in terms of bringing it closer to people who actually want to, would need these services and who should be paid for it. Also, we need to recognize the fact that uh, we might have a divide in terms of people who are educated, people who can use technical, technical tools and all of that. So. If you're building a product, all of this has to address the peculiarity of the Nigerian market. It has to address the peculiarity of the Nigerian audience you're trying to serve. Um, so, I mean, for me, 
Um, the next stage of innovation will be to address that new market and also make sure we create value that people can actually pay for such that we can start shifting away from the view of building services pro bono to services that people can now pay for. Uh, but beyond that, um, we also expect to see over the next decade to see really amazing products that would democratize uh, justice system, e-discovery. Um, we also want to see the court system also adopt electronic filing and all of, and all of that. So um, these are more some of the things we expect to see over the next few years. I hope we're going to have a very um, nice time um, throughout the rest of the session over the next few days. Um, thank you, Africa Law Tech, for putting this amazing event together and also making sure you're bringing um, legal tech closer to the African people. Thank you very much. And I hope we enjoy the rest of the session. Yeah, bye. Cheers.